It's a big week on the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Lots to talk about, some big announcements, and the top 10 early rankings of the quarterback position. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a moment and enjoy. Hey, this is Patrick Mahomes, quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's a brand new week. It's a big one. I don't think Jason's excitement can be contained. Mm -mm. It's not every day when we, you know, we record in the morning that Jason Moore is like screaming at the top of his lungs as we leave the office heading to the studio. And he's just like hyped for the show to the degree that he was today. Sometimes you're metabolizing McDonald's or something. I've, I've eaten and so I'm, you know unresponsive but today <laughs> uh today i did come in with a lot of energy i'm super excited for not just this episode but this entire week there's a huge week for the nfl huge week for fantasy football huge week for the fantasy footballers so fantastic yeah it's it's going to be a blast mike wright is here i certainly am you are equally excited i am just expressing it in a different i was giving jason his his little platform there. I'm. It, we have some huge stuff to talk about, and I mean, I don't. I don't want to overshadow that. But I'm really excited in the news section to talk about a new nickname that we have received from the NFL. Ooh, I, I don't know what you're. You'll talking. I, don't, I don't either. You'll remember once we get there. Okay. Oh! It is ultimate draft week, which means we have an ultimate draft week giveaway this is a special week every single year why because you have a chance to win a listener league spot come and play with us we're also giving away a signed jersey up and comer justin jefferson i've heard of him a signed justin jefferson jersey a signed travis Etienne jersey and to enter all you've got to do is pre-order the 2024 udk by sunday so you go to ultimatedraftkit.com, pick that up. You get the pre-order price. You're going to get it anyways. And this will enter you to win a Listener League spot along with a couple of signed jerseys. And we remind you, if you've already pre-ordered, you are entered to win okay. already. Good to go. And the best part about this, not only do you have a chance to be in the Listener League, but the best part is you're getting the Ultimate Draft Kit, <laughs> which is actually going to help you tremendously sure. this year uh, to, to have a great draft to bring home the championship this year. And then, uh, as Jason said, it's a big week for the NFL. The draft kind of takes over everything. We've got a couple of shows this week. And then we have a draft special live on NFL Plus uh, near the end of round one on draft night. So you can tune into that, get our live reactions. It's going to be a lot of fun. We expect you to be there with us. Okay. Yeah. Or you're, or you're, I do. Or you're, I, or you're I grounded. Expect, I, yeah. or you're I grounded. fully expect it. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about that news. News and notes from around the league. Well, I feel like we could talk about the Chargers for a while uh, after the video we got of Greg Roman and Jim Harbaugh just hanging out. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not his name anymore. Ah, uh, that's the name. G Ro. That's Greg Roman. Oh, I thought you were talking about Hard Dog. <laughs> no, 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 no. That was that was us. Hard Dog and G Ro. G Ro. Jim. Jim Harbaugh, a.k.a. Hardog, uh, <laughs> be careful, uh, <laughs> let us know that it, like a video, which is it was a tremendous video. The video. Like, so the dad vibes were off the charts, but it, in a very funny and endearing way. And he just keeps calling Greg Roman Giro, which is absolutely ridiculous, but. It was. I love it. It was troubling on some levels, like the the level of uh, like dad best friends that was going on in that video. They were at a an RV park. Yeah. They had each of their own separate RVs. <laughs> they're sitting there on like the lawn chairs. They're they're tapping drinks. They're like full 
It's like this G-Ro, was, G-Bro. Yeah. I mean, this is... Yeah, if the G stands down. for grandpa, this was not dad <laughs> vibes, guys. This is... this is We're dads. We would That's never fine. be out there. Like, when we retire, you know, <laughs> maybe then someday we'll have the vibes they have. They were hardcore in it with their trailers. I just... I just feel like there's something there about the commitment level between these two gentlemen. Like, Jim Harbaugh loves everything Greg Roman has ever done. Yeah. And the only reason this is all coming up, bearing the lead here, is that the Chargers signed J.K. Dobbins. <laughs> the Baltimore Chargers. <laughs> the Baltimore Chargers. It's a one-year deal. He's 25 years old. He's coming off a torn Achilles. This was a flyer coming from the offensive coordinator formerly of Baltimore that gives him an opportunity to come and play with another running back from Baltimore in Gus Edwards. Yes. Yeah, so Greg Roman was there with Gus Bus and J.K. Dobbins, said, I like those guys. Let's bring them over. We're going to run our scheme, which is my scheme. So, I mean, we, we've talked about this the entire offseason. They, they, they want to run the ball. And originally when we were talking about what a good coach and what a winning coach Hard Dog is, which he is, um, it was he's gonna use his personnel and he's gonna he's gonna do what his person personnel fits not just you know uh, uh, look I've I've run the ball in the past but what he has decided to do is make his personnel fit running it in the future to I me, think go uh, ahead Mike the it's just one it's another check mark for Gus Edwards in my opinion that I agree completely that JK Dobbins will be recovering from his Achilles really really hope that Dobbins can get back to any kind of form of the player he was, which was electric and special. But I mean, he's been hurt basically his whole career. His whole career. This doesn't stop the Chargers, of course, from spending a day two pick on the NFL draft. However, this is just like it's it's another part of the drumbeat growing that if the, if the Chargers don't do that, Gus Edwards will be shaping up to be a very interesting value running back. Uh, see, I, I'm, I'm curious because you both agree with that right off the bat that like Gus is the winner here. Dobbins should be ready for training camp, and this is a one-two punch that. But he won't. When be. they were, he you, won't be. You I'm saying you don't he, think he'll be ready for I, training I think, camp. Oh, I think he'll be ready to be on an NFL. Field. Not, not meaningful snaps for this team. Yeah, I don't think that he can unseat. Gus Edwards while he's in this recovery year. It's just so it's so interesting because he's always been the 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 leader ahead of Gus with this group of people together. So it, obviously, if he's if he's not capable, if he's not able to perform, then clearly he would not be the starter. That's, there was one Oops. team willing to take a chance on J.K. Dobbins like this, and it was his former offensive coordinator. the The demand for J.K. Dobbins wasn't there. Yeah, it's a bet, and I am. I'm almost certain they're going to be drafting a running back. The question is just going to be, you know, does it go well beyond – because they have a top pick in the in each round. So is it like instead of third round, is it fifth round? You know, is that the way that they view this backfield? That will tell me – where they take this pick will tell me what they think of Dobbins' health. I, I also think that this does significantly impact – like let's say they get a day two running back. I still think that this significantly impacts that running back because this is not going to be – it seemed like, okay, you have um, Austin Eckler workhorse role available for future running back. But now it seems like this is going to be a timeshare between – Yeah, a committee oh, yeah. between several backs. Yeah. And I don't know that there's anyone that's going to be just a fantasy star in this backfield. No, I, I believe it will be a committee. But I'm until I see mo like several running backs return from an Achilles – successfully, I will just keep going on the probability that he won't be close to what he was. Yeah, there, there's one thing to get snaps. There's another thing to be a, nearly as explosive as you were before. Yeah. You know, um, I think it was Ray G. Ray G went out and talked about the fact that, like, because he was showing a, a, a picture of Aaron Rodgers and the fact that you could see muscle atrophy in the recovered leg. Mm -hmm. And then he showed a picture. Uh, shout out. Great, great follow. Um but he showed a picture of himself recovering and how atrophied the leg was. Like you're you're a running back. I mean, it's it's ironic because back this, to JK one. I was gonna leg. say this yeah. was this was oh yeah this was JK He's got one his leg. strong leg though. <laughs> We've seen it. We've seen <laughs> we, him with one have. strong leg, and he dominates. He just can't all the way pull out pull away because you know that one strong leg isn't enough. Yeah. At Ray G Q U E on Twitter, if you want to follow that and see that picture I'm talking about, but. Look, I could talk about the Chargers all day. I really right. could because I think the actual most meaningful fantasy thing to happen to the Chargers that will impact 
More people in this entire draft will not be whether or not they run the football. It will be how much you undervalue the passing game and how appropriate how appropriate that will be, whether they, they're going to probably draft somebody to complement the passing game. Uh, the Everyone's going to be all out on that, even though Lamar Jackson had MVP seasons and threw the ball prolifically with Greg Roman. And I think it's going to be a matter of do we appropriate the risk properly as fantasy managers when sure. it comes to Palmer and Huge and whoever else they draft. Well, today is our top 10 early quarterback ranking show, and I can tell you who's not being discussed today. He's not in there? Nope. Not for me. Yeah. I think I'm probably the most still okay with, but he's not. I didn't clearly have him high enough to push our consensus. Royce Freeman, one-year deal with the Cowboys. So yeah. um, Let's go, Royce. <laughs> Rashi Rice, expected to receive at least a multi-game suspension. This was from an article that came out on ESPN today. Adam Schefter, uh, that was it was kind of a throwaway line, but Drew Davenport also came out and confirmed like if Schefter thinks that that's going to happen, it's meaningful information. Multi-game means – I started thinking about this. means two or more. Yeah. Well, okay. Technically speaking, you're correct. I started thinking about this, though, in the respect of like, you know, we can say in Dynasty, okay, it doesn't really affect Rashi that much because it's a few games. Except it puts the team in a position where they have to – potentially address yeah. the position which does affect Rashi long term like if he was there from week one maybe they don't feel the need to spend as early of a draft pick and if they go first round pick I'm going to be concerned about the long term outlook of Rashi Rice I think that's fair Zay Flowers will not face league discipline insufficient evidence to support his involvement in anything that violated the conduct policy there were some issues with uh, Zay Flowers that came up earlier but he's going to be fine. Always nice when the NFL just comes out and confirms it says, nothing to see here, move on. Joe Douglas, no news to report regarding a trade of Zach Wilson. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the funniest Why piece of Why did we put this in here? Just what to, are we doing? That must have been Kyle. Just to have fun. Uh, <laughs> but any minute now, guys, any minute, there, I'm sure we're going to have that um, hot trade for Zach Wilson. I like. They so must it, ask him about this at every press conference, and he just has to keep saying, Nothing to say. I don't. I, I think he. I think he uh, preempts it. He probably starts his press conference. Hey, everybody! No news. No news to report I, on the Zach Wilson. Yeah, I didn't see this one, so I don't know the tone. But I love that the quote is just no news to report. The throwing of the word "just." There's just no there's news to report right now. Literally nothing <laughs> to say. Please leave me alone. Oh, and uh, I want to get your thoughts because uh, I enjoy when they happen. But uh, the Broncos released new, uh, yes, new jerseys. They, they put some new jerseys out. I saw media. their car commercial announcing that. It's pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah, not a big fan. Uh, it, was, uh, it was meh. It was just. It was just vanilla. Yeah, uh, nothing impressive. I'm happy that the fans have new jerseys. I hope that you convince yourselves to like them. What jersey of what player do you buy for uh, that team? Javante. I mean, I, th this team is going to be one hundred percent. Yes, it, that's you, the that's you got to buy a throwback right now. Go classic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any other news over there in Deucer's like you Alley? Peyton Manning. You go classic no, Broncos quarterback, and you yeah. go Peyton. Yeah, nothing over there, Papa Josh. Nope, I'm good. All right. What were you big fans of the jerseys, guys? Meh. Yeah, that's how that's how I am. I want to be impressed. By the way, I am a I, I'm a jersey nerd. I'm a logo nerd. And so my I start from the place of benefit of the doubt on most of these. And so what was your final takeaway? It was it just could have been made on a create a team on Madden. That's how it felt. They they always they always brag about the fact that we took input from 10,000 people that contributed to this and that and the other. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. You In, just need one good designer to make something hot. Art and design is not supposed to be this crowdsourced van – that's how you end up with vanilla. You know, give me a special flavor, for goodness sake. Just hire the best designer. Yeah, we want cookies and cream over here. Yeah. At least a cookie dough. All right. Um, Something chunky. <laughs> enough Jersey talk. Let's talk quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. All right. We have been doing our early – rankings episodes we just took care of wide receivers took care of running backs it's not a deep dive it's an overview 
looking at where we have players stacked up right ahead of the draft. So things will change. You, If you equip some of these players with better weapons from the draft, which is you know littered with a bunch of wide receiver options that could go very high, you know, things will change. But um, you want to dive in? Sure. Over the last decade, this is the stat we've been giving out for each of the positions, an average of 4.2 quarterbacks repeated as top 10 options from the previous years. So that sounds like it needs a caveat because you had, what was it, 2.7 wide receivers? Or sorry, um, running backs. 3.7 wide receivers, 2.9 running backs. Yeah, basically about, running back. about three running backs and four wide receivers each year. So th this is a little bit higher. This is a little bit higher, but it is less important in the sense that like you're only starting 10 to 12 in your league, right? So if you single you've only, quarterback, yeah. Yeah, so I I'm just saying like am I getting that wrong because if you if you repeat 4.2, so you got some turnover at the quarterback position, but like finishing like the goal to me is not finishing top 12. Right. That's all I'm saying. Is it's like I'm not if I get top 12 at running back or top 12 at wide receiver, I love it. It's amazing. It's great. Repeating there is very powerful. Yeah, you win the league. But being at 10 or 11 or 12. Is worthless. That's that's Phillip Rivers. Phillip Rivers, yeah. year after year after year after year, was around the quarterback 10, 11, 12. And on a week-by-week -week basis, he just accumulated those stats over the course of a season. Most of the weeks, he didn't help you win your fantasy league. Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, certain years Patrick Mahomes, those guys help you win. So I, I see your point. It it doesn't really matter if you have the quarterback 10 or 11 or 12. It just doesn't help. There's two ways that you can help me as a quarterback in fantasy. Number one, be a difference maker near the top half, like top five. The other way you can help me is be a value that I take late in my draft, allowing me to pick up other players. So if I've got one more way for you. Uh huh. Hot streak! Oh, <laughs> baby. Wait, when you what? Get a, a hot streak. When you get a quarterback oh, okay. on a good hot streak? Like uh, Dak? Is that going back a couple of years? I guess. That's actually not been on the show. It, that was from Foosball around it, the office. It's been mentioned. Have we mentioned? Yeah. I feel like I, maybe. Hot streak. Yeah. 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 Okay. But a good hot streak can really help you out. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, no problem. I'm, I, Incredible analysis. Let's jump in. This is our consensus. <laughs> guys do it for multiple weeks. Really helps my team. Are we in four or six points? For uh, our consensus. Our consensus is six. We usually play in six-point scoring. Uh, that's our standard leagues. That's that's our league of record. There is not as big a change as you think between a four-point passing touchdown league and a six-point passing league. You, you've got, obviously, a little bit more change for your Jalen Hurts, who's going to rush, or Josh Allen, who's uh, going to have so many rushing touchdowns. But for the most part, it's less – drastic than you think and as far as the quarterback position overall we, we get questions every year every year well I play in a six quarter uh, a six point per passing touchdown league so should quarterbacks be more important no nope. not at all all right at number 10 in our consensus early rankings 25 years old finished uh, as the quarterback five in his debut year as a starter is Jordan Love I've got him at 10, Jason at 10, Mike at 8. Ooh. I think this is one of the offenses that you could see the most consistency and improvement from over the course of the year, so I don't mind someone jumping all in. Quarterback 9 in best ball, Mike. Talk about why you have him the highest and some of the bullish uh, arguments for Jordan Love. So he is fascinating because I mean, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll bring the name up of C.J. Stroud that – the fantasy football community, rightly so, is super excited for C.J. Stroud, and you're like, "Oh, he's that was his rookie year. You know, he's he's got all these weapons around him." And it's like you can copy paste almost every argument for C.J. Stroud over to Jordan Love. That was basically his rookie year, except he was way better than C.J. Stroud for fantasy purposes. Four thousand yards, thirty-two passing touchdowns. Gave you four rushing touchdowns as well. 11 finishes inside the top 12, the second most passing touchdowns. And his uh, the, the, the wide receiver names for, for Jordan Love are not as awe-inspiring, at, at least on the surface, as C.J. Stroud. Like, Stephon Diggs still carries a ton of, of name value, and Tank Dell is kind of like it, it, the, the, was the, like this breakout rookie that everyone fell in love with. 
Meanwhile, Jordan Love is just surrounded by really, really good players, and he has a good pass catching running back. It and they let him throw like they 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 let him go after it. So going into year two, yes, I know not his real year two, but essentially his second starting season. I don't know like ADP and cost and everything and, and range of outcomes. Jordan Love and C.J. Stroud to me are like I. Well, you're going to pay would, a lot I'm just, more. I'm just going to go for Jordan Love. You're going to pay a lot more for Stroud. It's a compelling argument. If you look at the last nine games played over the season, you talk about a hot streak. Hot streak! Jordan Jordan Love, 68% completion, on pace for 4,600 yards, 38 touchdowns, and five interceptions. A 108 quarterback rating in that stretch, running for another 143 and four. That is insane. Those numbers are... Yeah, I mean those kind of those are definitely league outrageous. winning numbers if you could do it over the course of an entire season. But we, you know, we I mean, see he that was we're the gonna, quarterback five. Yeah, no, he had a great season. I think the real question when you're talking about Jordan Love, I love the comp to C.J. Stroud because this is mostly a pocket passer, right? He's going to add 150 rushing yeah, yards bit. or something, but he's not moving the needle there. He's mostly a pocket passer and young with a great receiving core, so a lot of good comps. My worry is it, it comes down to, like, what do you really believe? Do you believe he's a superstar? Because Stroud in his rookie year did seem like he is going to be a superstar. Love came in a little less touted, uh, had time to develop. And so now I think it's like, did he just come in at kind of what his ceiling is? Because that would make a little bit more sense. We've seen seasons like this. I, I just want to caution us, like, he had 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns. Awesome. Here's a season in his second season in the league. This player had 3,987 passing yards and 32 touchdowns. Almost identical numbers. It was Derek Carr, who's a good quarterback. He's had a good career, but he's not a superstar. He's not a fantasy uh, sensation. Did you just call him a good quarterback? Derek Carr's a – yeah, he's good at playing I feel like that flies in the face of everything we've ever said about Derek Carr. Not ever. <laughs> Certainly this last year. Watching Derek Carr was okay. good brutal. Is, if you look at the tier of quarterback, good is not good. Like, I, if, if, not for if, fantasy. There's like, there's like, you know, Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. and then there's like, you know, superstar, and then, and then there's great. Well, there's, before great is franchise. Yeah, and then you've got good and is like got, one of the lowest tiers. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah. And then Zach Wilson is the the bottom part of it. But there's my, just no news. <laughs> my my point. There's God, <laughs> I wish there was news. <laughs> there's just still nothing to report. Um. My my point is, do we believe he is more superstar or more um ten year vet? Like Derek Carr's right. a ten year vet, and I I struggle with this because of how we viewed. Jordan Love coming in as a rookie and having to sit for so long, and even when he got the few chances, showed a lot of weakness, but he looked great. He's on an awesome team. So, I mean, if you have to pick superstar or 10-year vet, I lean the 10-year vet. Yeah. And I, I, I'm i oh. I'm starting to be – You're superstar? I'm starting to be moved with Jordan Love. Emotionally? Uh, <laughs> he's, like a, he's like a sunset over the I'm ocean. I'm being moved by Mike's words. As eloquent as he displayed them, the, the Stroud, I'm so much more confident in the off offensive scheme and success that they have in Green Bay long term, and what has been proven there. And so, um, and then I'm staring down. If I stare down both of these in the draft, and they're multiple rounds apart, I think Mike is moving me. That's that what was, I'm saying. And that was my larger point. Like I have him at eight. You guys have him at ten. I'm not. I'm not calling. I'm. I, for I'm I'm moving him. Yeah, there we go. I'm moving him. That's, I'm not, this show's supposed to be a little bit of that, a little bit of flexibility. The, the, I'm not calling for Jordan Love, the QB of the draft, top three. No, but in these in this range of guys we're talking about, ADP is so important to what is the uh, like, what does it cost, and what does it truly cost in terms of not just where I draft the quarterback, but what player did I skip to go all in on a particular quarterback. All right. Let's take a quick break and come back with another uh, interesting situation. All 
All right. I'm sure we will talk a lot more about Jordan Love over the course of the offseason. We got to get on to a player that finishes the quarterback four. Won me a championship. He's a beautiful man. And his number, he's not under a new contract, but comes in at nine. Dak Prescott. I have him at six. Mike at 11. Jason at nine. Um, so Dak, you, you two can fight. I'm in the middle. <laughs> yeah, look, Dak, <laughs> I just still believe in the fundamentals of this entire offense. And the stretch run for Dak, I, I brought this up before, it wasn't just like a handful of games. It was right. actually, you know, the majority of the season. It was 12 of the 18 games. If you take his final 12 games, that's where his stretch run was. That is nearly a 5,000 touchdown pace, a 44 touchdown. 5,000 Sorry, 5,000 5, yard, 44 <laughs> touchdown pace. That is, those are those are outrageous numbers, and the fundamentals of this offense are consistent and the same. Um, you didn't get running production last year. You probably aren't going to get prolific production this year, no matter who they draft. It's going to run through Dak and CD, and so these are two players that are playing for contracts. Couldn't be a better situation, and I I love the the draft value of Dak. I think he's going further than he should. I have I have him lower, clearly, but I don't have a problem with. With Dak, he can go on an absolute heater. His hot streak. There, yeah, there, yeah. there it is. He. Uh, By the way, he, we yeah. just went on a trip to Los Angeles for about four days. We had mm -hmm. some meetings we got to do, um, and and somehow during this trip, it was determined by Jason that every time he landed a joke, <laughs> he would say swish. He would say swish. <laughs> Yes. and validate his own joke yeah. whether or not he we thought it was funny no but once i say swish i know that it was a it was a <laughs> he hit. would confirm the joke it would be like he'd say something and me and mike wish we had like a crickets button and then a couple seconds later he just from the back seat he'd be going swish yeah, that's right i mean when it hits the <laughs> bottom of the net yeah can't I mean, take it back I point mean, scored it was, it it's was, a it's a real power move yeah it was He's try like, it try it at home next yes. time you have a good joke Maybe you don't get the response you want. <laughs> Swish. It's, it feels good, man. And then walk away, right? And yep. then you go to the other oh, end absolutely. of the court. absolutely. Smoke bomb that. But it was – my my slight concerns with Dak are he beat the crap out of bad teams, and he beat the crap out of teams when he was at home. Of course, he has all of his home games, but being the, – the splits are pretty wide. You know, 19 points a game versus uh, tough defenses, 26 – against bottom half defenses. So that's where that that's all that's where my concern comes is can the hot streak really keep rolling? Uh there's certainly a chance that it can, but they were like they finished in first. They will have a first place difficulty what I, schedule. What I like about Dak is that when he is on its nuclear. It's, yes. He finished one, three, two, one, three, three, seven, three. So he had a tremendous amount of finishes that were weak winning, but you know we've also seen a lot of Dak over time. You're gonna have variability. Which is in the why touchdown. he's the QB eight in best ball. Yeah, like, yeah. If if the general public were all in, I mean it's it's a little surprising that he's only at eight after what he did. I think it's so many years of being kind of not at that we league winning level. Sure. Yeah. When you're when you're a mid level guy, people want to look elsewhere. They just keep searching for. Yeah, keep searching for a league winner, but this is his third time in his career where he's been a top six fantasy quarterback in the course of the season. That being said, he's had a long career, so we are used to him not finishing there. I, I obviously am in the middle on the rankings between you guys. He is an okay pick, but I doubt that he continues that nuclear pace he was on. I mean, there was a reason in the middle of the season, you know, Mike was saying this is the guy who you could pick up off of waivers at that point to to have that yeah, I mean, success at the end. You want to make the like bear case, it's the Big Ben had that monster 40 touchdown season and then, you know, people categorize Big Ben as a later round pick every year. Uh Joe Burrow comes in at 8. Oh man. What think, do you, what do you, you know, do with Joe Burrow? You throw last year away. You have to. You have to throw it away. His, well, and you got to throw the, the, the then you got to throw his rookie year away too. Well, it was. So you only get one year. Oh, you get and the Super Bowl is a special year. It's like Matt Ryan. Like if, if you want to make a sad case for it, Matt Ryan had one year run into the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, I mean it, the 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 truth is, I prefer to have in fantasy football. I will continue uh, harping on this for eternity. I think the scoring is broken. I think it is stupid. I think that rushing yards and passing yards should equal the same for quarterbacks, but they don't. 
And so I prefer always to have a mobile rushing quarterback. You, If you want one of these pocket guys, which is pretty much all the guys we've been talking about, Jordan Love, Dak is mostly a pocket guy um, at this point in his career, you know, your, your Herberts, your Burrows, you can absolutely have an awesome season. Burrows finished top four, but you have to have around 35 passing touchdowns, 4,000 plus yards. It has to be a perfect season from the pocket. So let's have a, let's have a broader discussion there. Cause that gets brought up a lot in the middle of the year. Mike identified Dak Prescott as somebody to pick up. He was so convicted about it that he let me take him off of waivers instead yep. of, instead yep. of him made a mistake. It tells me a little bit about maybe a methodology that should be approached with some of these pocket passers that are dependent on 35 to 40 touchdowns because it's going to happen. There's going to be five or six of these guys that – or maybe maybe that's too many. Yeah, that's but, too many. But, you Jordan know, Love two or three. 32 last year and was number two. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, in totality, yes. But Dak, you know, Dak had 36, but his pace over the last 12 games would have been, you know, whatever, 48. 5,000, so. I believe. <laughs> 5,000. So all I'm saying is, is like, do you take an approach if you're not investing high on a pocket passer, if you've decided to wait to, to stay water, to look for that schedule lining up when we're five or six, seven weeks into the season. And we know who these, because it came down to conviction about the, the past yeah, schedule that you knew the schedule was going to be good. And, and then they're lined up to knock them down. Like these guys, because they have shown a capability to throw 40 when the schedule is conducive, they can go on a heater. Mm hmm. So there could be something to be said if there's a handful of them and you're and you're not going to be able to know what the turnover is on defense in the passing game until you're a few weeks into the year. That's all I'm saying is it's like cuz in some regard you feel like you could just okay, is it Dak? Is it Love? Is it Stroud? Is it Burrow? Like any of these pocket passers yeah. are you just yeah, hoping I mean that, you that, get the right one and then in that you, case you should drop the lowest one yeah, and then so, pivot. Uh, and I agree completely from from a gameplay theory you want to take the lowest one here and give yourself the freedom to move to stream through the season. The, those things usually work out better. However, when I'm looking at these guys like for instance, uh right now it's obviously early but the ADP has Dak and Joe Burrow right next to each other. Um and so you've got to make a decision. You're probably going to be on the clock and you can take either one and decide who do you want to bet has that big 35 touchdown season? Dak just did it with 36, but Burrow to me, he's he's had north of 32 twice already. And he's had four total seasons. Last year was a throwaway, injured first year was, you know, only 10 games as a rookie. So in his two healthy seasons, he was throwing that amount of touchdowns. So I lean more on that side. Uh he's still got the great weapons with Chase and as of now T. Higgins. Could add someone in the draft. That's my argument for Joe Burrow. Of, of that's the my argument like, for Dak. That's my argument for Stroud. That's why all three of those guys are above love for me. It's not the uh, – you were right about everything said about love. It's weapons. Yeah. Can you rely on CD, Chase, and then the weapons that Stroud has? There's a level of, like, baseline confidence you have with those. That I have Higgins. up. Higgins is not Jamar Chase, but I have Higgins as, a like, an excellent wide receiver. So, like, of, of, the, of, the, of the crew – T. Higgins probably is the best wide receiver too, to me. Uh, of what crew? I was like don't going through like, like the thinking about the Texans. I would I'd rather have T. Higgins as my wide receiver too over Tank Tank or Nico. And for for the Packers, the same thing. I'd rather have Jamar the combo of those two guys. So the that's where I'll go with if I'm going pocket passer, I'm probably going Burrow. So see, here's what's interesting. We're about to talk about you know the the kind of final one of these pocket passer guys in the same group in C.J. Stroud, but Stroud's going two rounds earlier. He's a fifth rounder versus seventh round. C.J. Stroud is seventh in our rankings, but he's going as the quarterback four, which means he probably won't be on any of our teams if that um, kind of ambition is unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, and the risk is tremendous, but also the reward could be very, very high. This is a player that, you know, you're adding Stephon Diggs to and Joe Mixon to an offense – where he showed just unparalleled command for as a rookie, uh, a trust from the coaching staff to to chuck it downfield as often as he needs to, and still survived past the Tank Dell injury. Nico was banged up all year. Noah Brown was banged up all year. Offensive line was banged up all year. We talked about it tremendously with the running game, and yet, you know, it was like ignored in the passing game where the runners couldn't run. But yet, C.J. Stroud could get out of the pocket and make things happen. Like, 
The reason he's being drafted there is because the ceiling for him is is Mahomes level. Yeah. Which is why he Mahomes is the only pocket passer drafted in the top five or six of ru- running quarterbacks because his ceiling is so tremendous. And that's some people want to appropriate that to Stroud, and I I do think it's in his range of outcomes. So that's what I wanted to bring up. I want to bring up because we, I I think most people listening they know Stroud, they know his weapons, they 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 like him. We group the, these guys we've been talking about so far pretty much together. Like it, maybe we've got Stroud number one of these uh, players. We we see his uh, ceiling as as the highest, but for the most part, we think that the most probable range of outcomes for all of these pocket passers is near each other. Therefore, we'll take the later one in ADP, uh, you know, save a couple rounds, grab another running back wide receiver, bypass C.J. Stroud, and grab, uh, you know, Love a couple rounds later. But of these guys, the only one that you really think, because we've, you know, we've seen enough from everyone else to know that they're not Patrick Mahomes. They're not the future GOAT. But C.J. Stroud still has that in his range of outcomes. Is it worth really taking that shot in the fifth round on the chance that you actually have the true difference maker, like not a difference maker, but the difference maker. Do we believe that as a high enough possibility in his range of outcomes that it's worth pulling the trigger a couple rounds earlier? Not in redraft, no. I do believe that in in Dynasty. I believe that C.J. Stroud will be part one of the faces of the NFL for, for 15 years, but I don't believe it enough this season – you know where he had a he still had an up and down year. We were impressed by plays. Mm-hmm. We were impressed by a game here or there. This is a player that had the same problems that you mentioned about Dak. Struggled against top sixteen defenses. Mm-hmm. Significantly fewer points against them. One year deal with Diggs, and we don't know what he's got left in the tank. I think that there's enough bear cases to be made to where you could, if you spend such a high pick, you're locking him in as your starter. Yes, which is what happens. And so if I can get those other four guys we just talked about later. And they all have the capability of throwing forty. I I don't see myself in on C.J. Stroud as much, unless I just want to have fun. I mean, there is <laughs> there's an aspect sure. of like how much fun it would be. I love C.J. Stroud. Yeah. I think I think rooting for him on my team would be a blast. Watching him play is really really fun. And when I when I looked and I'm like, oh, he only had 23 passing touchdowns, which is not a bad number for a rookie. Don't hear that and be like, whoa, that you know he can't level up. That's every like. From rookie year to sophomore year in the NFL, if you're a good quarterback, passing touchdowns is what really changes when you get near the goal line. So I expect that to go better, but it's still surprising to me because I feel like I saw 60 passing touchdowns. Like I remember every single one of them last year with Stroud. He was so much fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, and he and he turned an offense that no one expected into something meaningful in fantasy for two wide receivers nobody expected to be meaningful. So – he he was tremendous, and you add Diggs, and you remember Josh Allen's first year with Diggs, and you've got that trifecta of weapons. I think um, you brought up Andy that he has, he shares a lot of the problems with Dak in the sense that he struggled against the better defenses, which he did. Um, Mike, you brought up with Dak, yeah. they finished first. They're going to get a harder schedule this year. They they have to play the you know the first place schedule, and same with the Texans. Yeah, and then just an interesting like historical look, you know, over the the last decade. Rookies that have hit the four plus percent in terms of a touchdown rate, which is the attempt, the uh, the percentage of their attempts that turn into a touchdown, they they mostly hold steady. Like these guys, so Jameis Jameis actually went up, and so did Marcus Mariota, which is pretty wild of just based on attempts. But it's no one went, no one like skyrockets. You know what I mean? So. That's my only. That's the concern. Is C.J. Stroud, electric player, but can we get, can we get thirty-five touchdowns? He, he just seems like he's going to be the victim of his own hype in fantasy yeah. costs. So he is a full-on. This is just you're you're taking your flag and you are putting this thing in the ground, saying this is the player who's going to be the difference in fantasy football, which is on a quarterback in a single quarterback league at that ADP is. It's a very scary proposition. We have completely and utterly talked me 100% out of C.J. Stroud. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I mean, and I love C.J. Stroud. I think he is a very good quarterback. Yeah, like we said, we love watching him. Reality like the, versus fantasy. The, yeah, yes. Yeah, the, I would. For would fantasy you? purposes, where he's drafted, how he plays, what my expectations are for him, and what his very small probability uh, outcome would have to be 
to warrant where he's going is like I'm there's You're just like, I'm CJ, out. No way. Yep, CJ, no way. Sorry. <laughs> Kyler Murray comes in at six, twenty six years old. Being drafted as the quarterback ten. We all have him higher than that. Last year was a lost season in a lot of respects, just with um coming back from the injury. He came Trust back in, in the week, process. Came back in week ten, got zero production and availability oftentimes from Hollywood Brown. He he didn't have the weapons, you know, and this year we expect I expect Marvin Harrison to be the wide receiver one in a few days. Sure. We know for sure, for sure, for sure, that there will be a big name rookie wide receiver added. Uh still the highest odds are for it to be Marvin Harrison, but it could be Odunze, it could be neighbors. Um the Cardinals have built their entire uh, offense around a hole to be filled with wide receiver <laughs> sure. one in the draft. They yep. just don't have one. Michael Wilson is the, the the wide receiver one, and he basically was the wide receiver one last year with Hollywood Brown disappearing. Uh, I wish Kyler was not an Arizona Cardinal because we're Cardinals fans, and it seems very homer, but the truth is with his dual threat ability, his low price in ADP, he is the target of targets right now. When he came back last year with terrible weapons, often ACL, he was still the quarterback nine in points per game from week 10 on with no options. He would have added on a 17-game pace 518 rushing yards and six rushing touchdowns yeah. off the ACL first year back. So, like, now he adds some great wide receiver in the draft, has a year recovered from the ACL. Every game he's been on the field for fantasy purposes has been sensational. He's been a top fantasy quarterback pretty much every game. It might not be like the one, two, or three, but he scores a lot of fantasy points. His floor is very high. So to me, he is probably the best value in the draft because when I look at who could blow up, who could end up with that top three season, it's usually someone with that dual threat ability. Uh, you know, your Lamar, your, your Hurts, and Kyler has that, and he doesn't cost much. So if it doesn't work out, you can move on. He, he just It lines up to me to be a, a very valuable fantasy asset. All right, quick break, and we'll hit our top five. All right, at five, Anthony Richardson. Now, this is not my fault. I've got him at eight. This that That is your fault that he's two, not that he's, four. That he's not well, four you yet. both have him at four. You are all in on Anthony Richardson, a uh, 22-year-old return to action after an injury-plagued season that saw him and Jonathan Taylor never play together look the hands are a little shaky thinking about him at qb4 yeah this, this is um this is an interesting one uh he's being this is above best ball adp so you guys are even more bullish than the uh those taking the shot on him in best ball right now and i feel like my my words on anthony richardson have, I've, I've said them many times extremely small sample um, you don't like two full games? No, I don't love it. Uh, and then, you, you know, you had... You don't love four injuries through four <laughs> games? Is that... yeah, this is a different way to go about an argument. You are taking the words out of my mouth. That's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. We, we know what we're doing here. We have disarmed you. No, I mean, it's... I. You know, when you've thrown... Having said all those really terrible things, three total he's still going to be passing great. touchdowns in his career. And so, and then, you know, a little bit of the Jonathan Taylor and him goal line situation. Do they want to put that shoulder into harm's way to start the season will be a question. I know you don't want to take the Anthony Richardson out of Anthony Richardson, but you also would like to not take Anthony Richardson out of the game. Yep. So to me, there is risk and um, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not spinning that QB six capital. There is tremendous risk. Um, everything we said is 100% true. He's an injury risk. We have no large enough sample size to be confident. No one can be confident. Uh, we, Mike and I, I think, are gambling men, you know, where we want high return on the odds. We we, we don't want to make a draft pick where it can be slightly better than ADP. I, I, I don't want to take a draft pick where I'm trying to pretty much make sure it's just what I drafted. I'm looking to win the league, be the one out of the 12, and you have to take risks on people who have otherworldly upside, and there is some evidence. It's small sample. It's impossible. You know, two full games, you don't know. But in those two full games, he's the quarterback four, 
and he was the quarterback too. So he was, I mean, uh, if those trends continue, you've got a true outlier alpha human being, you know, on the, on the Cam Newton level. If you talk about who, what kind of, um, like, I love Kyler. I love Kyler's rushing ability, but Kyler's not going out there and getting 10, 11, 12 rushing touchdowns. Right. Um, he's not built for that. Whereas Jalen Hurts can. Uh, you know, Josh Allen can. Anthony Richardson can. And so we have seen enough glimpses. And so this is a, this is a player where it's just game theory. Like, if he comes out and crushes it this year, everyone will be in on him next year. Obviously, he's someone you've got to pay up for like Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. This is the only chance you have to take any kind of a discount. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You move on, you cut them, you stream them. Uh, but I'm willing to take the shot because I don't think there's anyone else in this year's class that could end up as the quarterback one in, in a in a in an otherworldly fashion. You said otherworldly again. That's so well, many worlds just, away. Just letting you know. Do you know how many worlds away he could be? We're talking is this next like Space two. Jam. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Matt, Matt LaFleur, Shane Steichen. Those are the two head coaches I have a tremendous amount of confidence in what they put together on offense. That gives Richardson and Love a lot of upside. I don't know where Richardson is going to end up in redraft. If it, you know, you talk about getting any kind of a discount, I do feel like you have the same problem with Love that you have, or sorry, with Stroud as you have with Richardson, as in where you draft him, you are committed to him as your starter. Maybe I, that'll be fine. I think you're not. In in this sense, um, you he'll are, be out, so you have to pick somebody else. Yeah, R yeah right. Exactly. No, it's that his floor, if you're wrong, is bad enough where you can move on. Like C.J. Stroud, his he's going to be good enough every game. Where if you invested in him, you're going to keep playing him. Whereas Anthony Richardson could come out and fall on his face. He could come out and just dud two weeks in a row, and you're like, okay, I'm I I I cut my losses. I took my shot, and t take the L. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I like that. Uh, it's like taking the draft pick. We always talk about, like, your last draft pick. It's someone you want to be able to cut after a week if – Yeah, I just want to be able to cut my fifth-round pick. <laughs> <laughs> that See, that that's where it's – um, that's why he's not in the conversation for me, but I get it. I get the upside. Um, at four is Patrick Mahomes. He'll be on his way to – attempt a third title in a row 4100 yards for uh, 27 touchdowns 14 picks um this was the quarterback 18 from week 10 on this was a storyline last year in fantasy mike and it um, was brutal you know you're, you're not going to have at a minimum rushy rice for a couple of weeks maybe more to start the year travis kelsey is older it's it's almost impossible i think to trust any sort of rookie Walking into a situation that didn't work with Hardman, it didn't work with Sky Moore, didn't work with Rice in the very, very beginning of the year. So if they draft Troy Franklin or somebody at the end of the first round, I don't think that player makes a huge impact in the first few weeks. So do you think it's bumpy road to start the year for him? And if so, is he? does that change the way you look at him for fantasy draft assessment? Yeah, I mean, no one is going to be on this show saying, like, you shouldn't draft Patrick Mahomes – he can't be the quarterback one, any of that. that right. He he's. I think as he's on Superman. A, I think he's on a schedule to do it, isn't he? He is. He's always like the the back and forth you're talking about. Yeah, he was number one last year, uh, in 2022, and then he was number. Oh, well, okay, he was four in 2020, but he played yeah. 15 games. So, uh, and he was over the first half weeks one through nine in points per game. He was the quarterback three. Yeah. So the the truth is, you know, finish as the quarterback eight. I think that that's probably near around where he finished. Probably finishes around quarterback six, seven, eight. You've got his number one wide receiving option being Travis Kelsey in a situation where, much to our chagrin, much to I, I believe what could happen. Like if if they use Travis Kelsey as the dude, he was out there hundred percent of snaps. You know, like he used to be, and um, they just said we're gonna run you into the ground. I think that'd be really helpful for fantasy points for Patrick Mahomes. I think Kelsey could do it. They're not going to do that. You saw it last year. They, you saw them pull back a little bit of Kelsey, give him more breathers, allow him to be awesome and rested and ready for the playoffs. They care about winning Super Bowls. It works. It worked. They did it. 
So it's one of those situations where I don't know that they need Mahomes with this defense to go out there and be Superman again this year. Yeah, we only five games hitting the over for Kansas City, and their defense second in points per game allowed. Like that's just that's that's not conducive to what we need for fantasy football and the way that just the NFL has changed the way that they play against Patrick Mahomes. This stat is absurd because I didn't even realize how bad it was. One passing touchdown of 20 or more air yards. His yards per attempt like, have gone down. Like Patrick Patrick Mahomes, that's what he does. Yeah, it does and, bomb touchdowns. And the the personnel combined with yeah. the, the way that the, the, the cover two shell plays against Patrick Mahomes, it took those away. They can. They he, won the Super Bowl. Dude, yeah, no, so no, no, I know. Yeah, I know. So impressive that they they can do it. They're like, we'll just yeah. beat you, however you let us beat you. They're so smart. It's it's really unfair. Yeah, that, but we want big touchdowns. I know. Number three is Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson in the Todd Monken system last year: thirty six hundred passing yards, twenty four touchdowns, added another five on the ground with eight hundred twenty one rushing yards. Had the most starts of his career, so he stayed healthy. Had the highest completion percentage of his career, so he was accurate. Had a new offensive coordinator, helped him to a eight uh, eight yards per attempt. That's the highest of his career. He also scrambled more than he's ever scrambled in his career. Number one in fantasy points per drop back, fourth in yards per attempt. You know, the passing, like the, the accumulation, you know, in total yardage, it wasn't um, – you know, extreme touchdowns in in, uh, in terms of total yardage, just 3,600 yards. But at the same time, that was a career high for him. That was something that they put into place. There's been some talk this offseason bringing in Derrick Henry that they may dial that back a little bit. But we missed Mark Andrews for a, a big part of the year. Um, I think Lamar Jackson's very – I think I think three's right. I mean, three and four, three or four – yeah, I like uh, it. Knowing that there's variability, knowing that there's these weird games that Lamar just disappears for, they don't need him. Those are going to happen. They've always happened. But comfortable, cozy, every week starter, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I, I wish he was. It's weird because you, you usually have these really mobile guys who are very consistent. You know, you look at the Jalen Hurts, it's like you don't really have a lot of down games or, or Josh Allen. But somehow Lamar is able to be very inconsistent. He's he's boom bust. Well, he's been five rushing touchdowns versus fifteen. Right. Yeah. Forty seven point one percent of the time exceeded twenty points. So that is a C in our consistency. Yeah. Exactly. So I I I don't love him nearly as much as those big bullish quarterbacks that can um, be a little bit more relied upon around the goal line for rushing touchdowns, especially now with Derrick Henry. You're going to have Derrick Henry just scoring these touchdowns. Um, not that you didn't already have that with Gus Bus, so you just got to factor that in when you, are, when you talked about you've got an every week starter, yes, but you don't have an every week helper in Lamar Jackson. Yeah, it's it, he can win you a week for sure, it, but but it's funny you said those bullish quarterbacks. I mean, you're talking about two quarterbacks, three. Anthony Richardson. I <laughs> I put Anthony Richardson and I mean Jonathan Taylor's getting the ball around the goal line. I'm telling you that that's going to happen. There, Anthony Richardson when given the opportunity to be one of those, was injured two separate times trying to go into the end zone when they didn't have Jonathan Taylor. I, I'm not I'm not willing to hand him that. Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, proven over time, that's, but Tanya. That's totally fair. I'm saying physically. I'm saying as a as a, as a human specimen, uh, the bullish giant man. It's bull light. Bull light. So not bullish as in you are – Making a bull case. An optimistic No, man. bullish as in – like Minotaur. Put the horns down, run. I mean, it, it, he's bigger than Jalen Hurts, isn't he? I mean, Jalen Hurts is Jalen Hurts is not you're, you're, we're not Lamar? saying it cuz he's Yeah. I mean, we're not putting not not in the not in the rumpus. Look, it's a tush push. It's not put the shoulder down. I don't know if you've watched yeah, an Lam NFL Lamar broadcast 6 -2 -2 of Jalen Hurts, but I've heard that he can squat over 600 pounds every single week. <laughs> what? This is the first I'm hearing about that. Well, Hertz is at two. He had 15 rushing touchdowns. I don't think he's going to have 15 again. Probably not. With Saquon there and the lack of Kelsey at, under, at also, center. Yeah, he threw 23 passing touchdowns. So his numbers are very similar, actually, across the board to uh, Lamar, except for he threw twice as many interceptions. 
he ran for fewer yards than Lamar, and he just saved it by tush pushing 15 in. Yeah. So if that changes, that would be uh, a couple of quarterbacks that could flip in fantasy finish. That's all yep. I'm saying. I it, I think it's it's fair to to bring it up, but we're at at this point, like with with Jalen Hurts here and Josh Allen one is just is there is there a true like are a real real rock solid argument to not have those guys up there? Yeah. No, the, not not yet. The consistency of 76.5 percent of his games crossing that threshold we look for an a consistency he's done this over years and while his passing was down a little bit I do think the offensive coordinator change could be helpful and if you look at the weapons you know AJ yeah. AJ Brown yeah. Devontae Smith that's, that's great that's a, a really uh, good receiving core I mean as good as it is for any team in the league the last season so Josh Allen comes in at one last season Josh Allen was his average draft position was about 12. Really? Yeah. And so, somehow worth it. Um, you know, Mahomes was in the 20s last season. Jalen Hurts was in the 20s last season. So um, Josh Allen, we know the resume, right? This is where we get to the top of these rankings. We don't have to tell you that they're good at football. Loses Stephon Diggs, though. Loses Gabe Davis. Yeah, that's so worth mentioning. Uh, transformation of the offense to a degree. A little more run heavy in the second half. Uh, any concerns with Josh being worth? Like, would you take him at twelve? At twelve? No, probably no. not. I don't think he's. Go is he going at twelve this year? I I, uh, I feel like he's dropping to more the back of the second. But at twelve this year, without Stephon Diggs, there are question marks. He's still going to be the first quarterback drafted. It's just a matter of what other running backs and wide receivers are there that I'm confident in. Josh Allen was has been worth it the last two years, and we don't usually draft quarterbacks high because you can replace them, you can stream them, but over the last couple of years, Josh Allen's been really a difference maker that's not replaceable. All right, so the top 10, Jordan Love, Dak Prescott, Joe Burrow, C.J. Stroud, Kyler Murray, Anthony Richardson, Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, and Josh Allen. Didn't talk about Justin Herbert. No conversation there. None needed. And um, I, you know, despite thinking he has the ability to surprise compared to expectations with Greg Roman, I don't think I would take him over any of the 10 we mentioned. So it makes sense. Uh, we will have a draft predictions episode of this show on Thursday ahead of the NFL draft that night. I love that show. Don't miss it. We always get 100% of them right. If you have, don't vet that or anything and check. No, don't, don't look. Just, don't go let, back. Just, just trust us. But we do. Just we trust never, us. We, we never we mess up. Right. Uh, but very, very exciting. And a reminder, it is Ultimate Draft Week, so head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. If you order by Sunday, the pre-order price for the product that you're going to love, you get a chance to win a Listener League spot to come and play with us in the Listener League, a chance to win a signed Justin Jefferson jersey and a signed Travis Etienne jersey, so do not miss that opportunity. Head to ultimatedraftkit.com. You guys have anything else to add? There's just no news. On... Sam Zach Wilson. I almost said Sam Darnold. <laughs> oh, ah, the same, same Yeah, yeah. Right. It's the same picture. We'll catch you on Thursday for a big time show. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>